There are a handful of videos out there purporting to teach about African American English. Mostly, they're a little out of date and call it African American Vernacular English, which now has a more limited meaning in linguistics. And mostly, they're made by word nerd white guys. I thought it was time for something a little different. So a while back, I interviewed four of my favorite linguists about African American English. I sat down with Dr. Hiram Smith, professor of linguistics at Bucknell University, Dr. Sanja Lanehart, professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. You may know it as the same department as Noam Chomsky. Minnie Anand, PhD candidate in linguistics at Georgetown University. And Christopher Hall, a co-author of mine and researcher and facilitator at Culture Point. All four have published on African American English, but more importantly, they've significantly impacted how I and many others think about AAE and language in general. So today we're going to hear what they wish the public knew about African American English. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I'm Dr. Taylor Jones and this is Language Jones. So you know who you're listening to, Dr. Lane Hart wrote the book on African American language. Literally, the Oxford Handbook of African American Language. Dr. Smith is an expert on historical development of African American English and changing uses of the N-word. Yes, that N-word, which he's currently writing a book on. He's also an expert on the Spanish lexifier Creole Palenquero. Black linguists do a lot more than only study AAE. Minnie is an expert on AAE in Washington, D.C., and was the main interviewer for the Corpus of Regional African American Languages recent recordings. Uh, the Corpus is open to the public, and I've got a link in the description. She's a Ph.D. candidate at Georgetown, writing her dissertation on AAE, and she's involved with the Language Change in D.C. project, which has already documented black D.C. regionalisms like Bama, Seist, and Luncheon. And Chris is the hyperpolyglot who got me interested in linguistics in the first place, a native Harlemite and a jazz musician and a co-author of mine. We've published or presented on negation and negative polarity items in AAE, N-words, but no, not like that one. Rachel Dolezal's accents, statistical methods, and changing use of the N-word, yes, that one. He's also an expert on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and a facilitator for Culture Point, where he trains government, military, and private sector clients. I asked all four variations on the same question. What do you wish the average person knew about African American English? Because of what my academic experience was, and because they're all linguists, I expected certain things, and honestly, I was a little surprised by what they said. I was expecting discussions of accents, the minutiae of grammatical and phonological rules, and so on. While there was a little of that, instead, there were a few themes that came up over and over again, and they're themes that aren't really talked about in a lot of the material on AAE that's already out there. Those themes were, one, not all African Americans speak AAE, and not all AAE speakers are African American. This is probably because they were talking to me and they know that I grew up in AAE speech communities. Two, AAE is systematic and rule governed, and those rules exist in other languages that people respect. Three, you can get it wrong. It has grammatical rules like anything else, and when you break those rules, you aren't speaking AAE correctly. Yes, there's such a thing as correct and incorrect AAE. Four, the reason that people don't always respect AAE isn't really about the language, it's about stigma. And five, AAE speakers shift registers within AAE from vernacular to African American Standard English, and many but not all shift across dialects between AAE and other varieties of English we might think of as white. Let's hear these in their own words. Note that as they discuss different topics, they might shift among African American vernacular English, African American English, and African American language, depending on what exactly they're talking about and the point that they're trying to make. So first up, the Venn diagram of AE speakers and Black Americans is not a circle. So when I think about African American vernacular English, African American English, African American language, I think about a a, a linguistic variety, a type of language that's spoken um, predominantly by black people, but people who aren't black can speak African American language. And people, and it doesn't say that every black person speaks African American language. I think those are really important things to remember. So I'll say it again because I think it's critical. Every black person doesn't speak African American language, and every person that speaks African American language doesn't have to be black. Dr. Lanehart echoed those points in talking about why she called her book the Handbook of African American Language. So African American language simply is language spoken by or among African Americans. And I use that uh, based upon Sally Coco Mufwaini's uh, presentation and paper that he did for another book uh, that I edited in which he does a comparison uh, for how you name things. So, for example, 
Japanese is language spoken by or among people from Japan, right? So sort of that sort of concept. So what that means is it doesn't mean that other people can't speak it. It's just that this is the origination of it. To really hammer the point home, there's nothing biological about speaking AAE. It's social. So it's the language variety originated by African Americans and spoken by many, but not all of them, and a small handful of people who aren't African American. The second point was that AAE is a system that has rules. As Chris put it, it's a thing. What would I want people to know? Um, Firstly, I mean, simply, it's a thing. You know, just simply put, it's it's really is a thing. It's um, it's a it's not a a qualitative thing. Like it's not bad English, like some people say. It's actually what happens when you have cultural contact. You know, one could argue it's a dialect of English. It's a um, a pidgin or a creole at some point that developed into its own thing because of cultural circumstances or historical circumstances. But it's certainly something that exists. Um, and there's a lot of overlap with standard English. There's um, some things that make it unique because of the aforementioned circumstances or you know the history. Um, but there's definitely a system. Dr. Smith built on this sentiment, referring to a classic experiment that illustrates the grammatical system of AAE. I think all linguists know that despite, and people in general kind of know this, that just despite our linguistic differences and dialect differences that for the most part were understood. We, we can, for the most part. But the simple cookie monster test. So we do this and it, it, uh, you've got a picture of a Sesame Street, the cookie monster and Elmo. Cookie monster in the, in the photo does not have a cookie in his hand. Elmo is eating, eating cookies in the, in the photo. But you ask students and you survey people and say, who be eating cookies? The vast majority of whites and those who are not familiar with black English will say Elmo be eating cookies because they say he's eating them right now. Whereas those who are familiar with black English say, no, Cookie Monster doesn't have cookies in his hand right now or in his mouth. But he's the one who be eating cookies because they understand um, that uh, invariant B is for habitual actions. Building on this, the third point was that you can get it wrong. And I think that for me, African-American language is, what I want people to know about African-American language is that it's rule governed, it's very systematic. You can do it wrong, just like you can do standard English wrong. You can do it wrong. And if you do, people will look at you like, what do you, that doesn't even make sense. And because you can do it wrong, because you can say things that are not grammatical, let me put it that way. Because you can say things that don't follow the rules, that's clearly evidence of rules. This is a crucial point that I want to underscore. AE is not broken English, and it's not just anything goes. It's not mistakes. It's a system. And because it's a system, you can get it wrong, as non-AE speakers often do. Here's many giving another example. Beyond the grammar police, like there's things that I would never say. Like I would never say that, right? Because you can't use those two features together. Yeah. I mean, you can't use, you know... And it's not about style, and it's not about, you know... Right. It's just that that doesn't... Right. So, it doesn't you know, parse. Say, yeah, she is not doing it, or she she's not doing it. But I can also say she ain't doing it. And I can say she doing it, she be doing it, but I can never say she ain't be doing it. Right. And I think just making sure that that paradigm of what's possible and what's not, people need to understand that just like we do conjugations in English and Spanish, and just like we have different forms that we can use in English and Spanish and any other language, so is it in African American language as well. The part about the grammar police, I think it's really important. Like, I'm not talking about, you know, Aunt Susie telling you not to use ain't, but I'm really talking about the fact that we do use ain't, we can we can talk about using ain't, um, but in this case, she ain't doing it, it's totally fine. She be doing it is totally fine. And and you can say she be doing it. She don't be doing it. But you would never say she ain't be doing it. Notice that what these experts are talking about is a core component of the grammar, how you conjugate verbs and what those conjugations mean. Often when people talk about AE, they talk about slang, which reduces AE to merely passing fads and sassy catchphrases. Those may be used in AE, but they're not AE. 
It's a set of rich systems of syntax and phonology. When linguists talk about AAE, we're talking about habituality markers and remote past marking and negative auxiliary inversion, as in don't nobody never say nothing instead of nobody don't never say nothing, and camouflage constructions and different systematic accents. I've published papers that talk about AAVE, but I'm actually talking about a vernacular register of AAE. Not all AAE is AAVE, and calling everything AAVE reduces AAE to only one of its registers and gives the impression that African American English is just slang. It's not. And perhaps most importantly of all their points, the stigma around AAE isn't actually based in linguistic fact. If you say double negatives are wrong but French is sophisticated, or you love Russian literature, you're not being consistent. As many put it, the stigma is more about skin than language. Um, when I think about when I think about all of the negativity and the way people look at African American language, I don't think it's about the language at all. It's really about the people who speak the language, and it's really about when we think about where we are today in 2020. Um, we've just witnessed the horrible, horrible murder of George Floyd. You know, we Breonna Taylor. We've seen. Ahmaud Arbery, like we see all of these things happening in front of us. It has nothing to do with the words that are coming out of those people's mouths. It has everything to do with the skin color. And I think when we talk about African-American language, if we put this same beautiful m melodic variety into the mouth of someone else, it wouldn't get as much negativity or as much um, criticism as it gets. But because the person who speaks it, the group of people who speak it, we're criticizing them. Chris asked a rhetorical question that I think gets to the heart of the matter. What's more important, the message or how it's delivered? Right. And for a lot of people, there's a politic about the how it's delivered. When people have conversations, they're always weighing what is said against how it's delivered. And... Judging, you know, weighing one or the other, deciding the importance of one over the other is key in a lot of, a lot of places mm -hmm. all over the world. And um, with African-American English, with the history of Africans in America at any given time or any group in America, really, but in this case, Africans in America, um, the appropriateness of a particular, of the usage of a particular register of african-american english or african-american english at all is constantly weighed over what is said lastly african-american english isn't always vernacular it's great to see people talking about aae but the fact that what is caught on out in the world is aave is a little depressing sandra lanehart's the editor of the oxford handbook of african-american language and she's been a proponent of the term aal for years so i'll start with her take on names and what comes into play when talking about how african-americans speak um, and so, but that also means that it includes all African Americans. And that means as a result, there is a continuum, just like there is in any other language, from what you might sort of think about as this uh, basilecto form, if you want to use the Creole continuum, to a sort of acrolecto standard mm -hmm. form, right? This, these standard forms, uh, which Arthur Spears talks about. My conversation with Sandra was so enlightening that I really want to share it with everyone. You can watch the whole thing here, and there's a link in the description. She wasn't the only one to say that AAE is more than just its vernacular register. Some have argued, uh, like Arthur Spears, that there is uh, not just, uh, we're not just talking about vernacular varieties when we're talking about black folks' English, but that black, there is a black standard, standard black English. Yeah however you define that. There's a lot more that can be said, and I hope to have many future public discussions with these scholars and others like them. I have another video explaining the basic linguistic facts of AAE here. These experts made different points today, which I think are bigger picture, and in some cases, a little more subtle. Let's take a second and recap in a slightly different order than we saw just now. AAE exists. It's a language variety that has rules and structure, which means you can get those rules wrong. It has multiple registers, including a higher educated standard register, and despite that, it's highly stigmatized, but the stigma is about who speaks it, not anything inherent in the language variety itself. And the fact that people don't understand it, and don't respect the people who speak it, has serious and dramatic repercussions. But we'll leave those for another video on another day. What do you wish people knew about AAE? Is there anything about it you wish you knew more about?
leave me a comment below and let me know. If you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I've got merchandise available, link in the description, and I'm always on the lookout for interesting questions to make a video about, so leave me a comment or a question below. Until next time.